Hey guys, uh, Nathaniel here. Uh, let me just start off by running this. Um, so we're going to be talking about the KDE plot, kernel density estimation plot over in Seaborn. Um, okay, that's good. Uh, so we did a little bit with this over when we were doing the distribution plot. Again, this is for univariate analysis. This is for something a little bit more specific, especially if you're trying to estimate the distribution uh, in univariate analysis. This will allow you to do a lot more stuff with that KDE than we were able to do before. So like, let's get started. Um, so this is what the, the KDE plot kind of looks like. Um, you know, you've seen it before. This is again for the total bills in our, in our tips data set. Um, again, this is normalized. Uh, there's a simple option which allows you to have it shaded or not. That kind of looks nice. Um, something very cool about this is you can do two dimensional KDE, two dimensional uh, kernel density estimation. So this is, this is with a, uh, you know, a two dimensional Gaussian, um, which looks pretty cool. Uh, so I, I can look at the, the distribution of, uh, the joint distribution of total bills and tips. Um, it's pretty, pretty sweet. Um, you can of course do this with the shade as well. Um, and this one it, sometimes it looks a little bit better, but you can sort of get the feel for it here. But let's, um, let's keep going. Uh, the next thing that you can do here is that you can, you can go ahead and, and set the number of levels. Um, so all, the, all these parameters are very uh, self-explanatory. The parameters that aren't super self-explanatory are kernel and, and the bandwidth. Uh, okay? So th these, are, these are two that aren't super self-explanatory. So, so what do I mean by that? Um, well, so here we go. Uh, notice that I've changed nothing but the, the kernel and the bandwidth in this case. Uh, so the kernel I'm using cosine, uh, a cosine kernel, and the bandwidth I'm using Silverman. Uh, so, so what do these things mean? So there's a lot of kernels uh, for you to choose from. Um, let's let's ch sort of check this out. Um, let's see. So if you go here, you've got a Gaussian kernel, you've got a cosine kernel, you've got a biweighted kernel. You've got this kernel. This is the uh, most efficient kernel based on some efficiency measure. Um, Tri-weighted, um, and I don't actually know what this one is. Um, so you've got lots of kernels to choose from. Uh, in, in the 2D, um, in the 2D KDE, you can only use the Gaussian, and this one you can use any of these types of kernels. Um, cosine kernel has 99.9% .9 efficiency. APA has around 100% uh, efficiency. So you could go by that. Um, Honestly, uh, what I've read on the kernels and kernel density estimation is they don't matter too much. Uh, they don't matter half as much uh, as sort of the uh, bandwidth. Okay, so I'll go ahead and link some articles as to them. I, if I were you, I would just basically always use the Gaussian. Um, yeah, I unless you're, you're worried about having these longer tails. So, so notice with the, um, I guess up here, uh, with with our with our cosine kernel, you know the tails sort of drop off very quickly. It's, this is because the cosine drops off uh, very very quickly. As as instead here the tails sort of linger for a little bit longer. Um, okay, um, and now we've got this sort of bandwidth. Uh, so there's there's two things uh, that you might want to be curious with. So we we can go ahead and use whatever EPA, and we can use Scott. Okay looks fairly similar. Okay, so you've got two things that we'll try to figure out what the bandwidth is optimally for you. Uh, so Silverman and Scott. Um, the rationale here is that you can actually find an optimal bandwidth um, only if you know what the actual underlying distribution looks like. Um, in that case, you don't know what it looks like. Then, then you, can, you can estimate something called uh, mean integrated squared error. Um, uh, so in, in that case, uh, that's that's totally fine. You can actually find what an appropriate KDE would be, but in our case, we don't actually know what the distribution looks like. We're trying to actually intuit what this distribution looks like, get a good graph of it. Um, so in these cases, you've got two rules of thumb. You've got the Silverman and the Scott. Both of them were invented by Silverman, um, but one of them is called Scott for some reason. They both use nearly the exact same formula. The only thing different is that the Scott... I believe is a little bit wider, and then the Silverman is a little bit narrower. Um, 
So Scott uses the one for maximum efficiency. Um, again, this is something super complex that I, I don't actually fully understand because I've not really looked into it too much. Um, and then uh, Silverman uses the one that's a little bit narrower uh, just because he's seen that in practice. Uh, it seemed to work a little bit better. Um, so which one should you use? Um, so the, the only really... Uh, you, you can use you can use both. I would, I would sort of recommend using the silver one. That's what they recommend here. That's what the the one that they they go ahead and put here. Um, the only thing that you need to be concerned with is if your distribution is considerably non-normal. Um, so multimodal. Uh, so that means having two multimodal. Uh, so that means having two peaks. Um, uh, this distribution can really mess up on. Uh, and I've included some documentation on that as well. Um, so you can go ahead, go ahead, just use sort of the basic one. I would say Gaussian with with the Silverman uh, bandwidth selector. Uh, if you've noticed that it's, it's a multimodal one, uh, in this case you might want to lower the bandwidth. Uh, you'll you'll get something that's way too smooth if you use the the Silverman. Way way too smooth if you use the Scott. Scott is really optimal for things that are normal, that are really normal. Um, in terms of the kernel, from what I've read, it doesn't really matter. Uh, choose choose. Choose the one that you like the best. Uh, okay. So let's go ahead and take that out. Okay. Uh, you can you can make this KDE instead of, of the PDF. Um, you can make it of the CDF. Uh, so instead of the point density function, you can make it the cumulative density function. So this will go all the way from 0 to, to 1. Um, so from 0 here all the way up to 1. Um, uh, which can be somewhat useful, uh, especially in, in different types. You can change the grid size. This is kind of confusing. You don't necessarily know what this is. But in the background, what they do is that they uh, evaluate this new CDF on a couple of points. So in this case, if you change the grid size to 4, it will only be evaluated on 4 points. So 1, 2, 3, 4, equally spaced throughout. It will look ridiculous, but you increase the grid size in order to increase granularity. You can have a cut. Um, what does the cut do? The cut means it won't display the KDE um, uh, past uh, uh, the list, uh, the last data point plus this cut. So my cut is zero. My last data point is fifty-one. Uh, my last data point is zero. So, um, which does make sense. You, you definitely do want uh, some sort of cut, at least on the lower bound here, because it wouldn't make sense. You're never going to have a total bill that's less than zero. Um, and then you have the clip. Yeah, all these things, it's just, just like, in the documentation, these aren't really well explained, especially grid size. You have no idea what they're talking about. And clip and cut are a little bit different. Um, so what the clip does is this means all the data points outside these ranges. So let's say you have extreme data points. You can clip them out using this clip. So we'll only take data points between 0 and 30. Now, KDE can go past 30, as you see right here. Okay. Uh, the final thing that I just want to show you is you can add other plots onto this. This is sort of like a, an awesome seaborne functionality here. Um, so you can go ahead and you can add your rug to the uh, KDE just like this. Um, when would you use a KDE? Uh, you know, honestly, not too, not too often. Um, uh, yeah, uh, you, know, you, you get a lot of the, the functionality from the dist uh, plot. Um, so that, that will go ahead and use the, the Silverman rule of thumb uh, along with a Gaussian kernel, uh, which is generally what you're going to look for, uh, especially if the data is distributed normally, if it, if it sort of has that sort of bellish curve shape, especially if it's not multimodal. Even in this case, uh, this case where it um, has, has a long right tail or something like that, or it's just a little bit, uh, has a little bit more kurtosis, a little bit fatter tails, uh, you, you can totally do that. It's totally fine. Um, uh, if uh, if you the granularity control it's not too much if you want to look at a a CDF you need to use this uh, you can't necessarily specify that in a disk plot um, this can be useful uh, so especially if you're you're considering doing logistic regression so if you want to look at a CDF you need to use this the last thing that that you might want to use this for uh, the last two things are two dimensional uh, kernel density estimation this is super useful for that. Um, and you can even add this, uh, we'll show you doing this, you can append this to other plots as well, which is really cool, especially when we do a pair plot a little bit later on. So the two-dimensional KDE, very cool. And then the final thing to use this for is when you're looking to uh, use an even tighter bandwidth. So this is something that is 
uh, bimodal. Um, if you have something that's bimodal, trimodal, when you have multiple modes, you want to use something that's even less than Silverman. Um, so, so that that is KDE. Uh, I hope this is this has taught you some things about it and explained some of the weird parts. It's not incredibly weird. Uh, we'll be coming up to even more weird stuff later on. Uh, but I hope this was helpful. Okay, always a pleasure.